Hey guys, Master GX here, and we're gonna play Doki Doki Literature Club. I heard it's a really good game, so let's just get to it. Which is, uh... The, 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 I love the music. Apparently this is a really good game. This game is not suitable for children. Wow. Settings. Text speed. Let's make it, like, fast. Turn on the volume a little bit. Okay. New game. This is my real name, but don't do anything about it. Elvin is my real name. You probably already know that. Hey! I see an annoying girl running towards me from a distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were, good, we were children. You know, like the kind of friend you never see yourself making today, but it just kind of worked out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together, and days were just like this. But starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, so I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's waiting, going to chase me out like this, I almost feel better off running this way. However, I just sigh and idle in front of this crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ha! Ha! I overslept again! But I caught you this time. Maybe, but you only because I decided to stop and wait for you. And you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Alvin. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want to let them think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. Well, you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have you don't have to have it in you to be mean if you, if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> what was that? We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Elvin, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possibly possible that I did, in one of our many conversations where I specifically go along with whatever she's going on about. Oh, I'm just gonna save this. I'll get back to the current. Sayuri so likes to worry a little bit too much about me, so but when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. I think anime is weird. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't be learn learn you won't learn how to socialize or having any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. And I know you're happy now, but I die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look at a few clubs if you make you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why did I let myself get lectured by su such a carefree girl? Much more than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing, uh, I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me kind of want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After packing my things up, I stare blank blankly at the wall, think looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori? Sayori? Yeah. Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting there and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than for me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait for me. Wait, wait up for me if it's going to make you late for your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know, you know what? Well, that you could come to my club, Sayori. Yeah. There is no way I'm going to the club. Eh, meanie. Sayori is vice president of the liter liter literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. Literature. In fact, I'm sure I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first to show interest after the one who pro proposed the club, she inherited the title vice president. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be le even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. 
Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a few new member, and Atsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't, I can't tell if Sayori is really, really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. I la left out, let out long sigh. <sighs> Fine, I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go! And thus, today marks the day I, shall sold, I sold my soul for a cupcake. <laughs> I detectively f follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a s section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. And I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori says you always, uh, always says nice things about you. Seriously, you brought a boy. Really chill atmosphere. Uh, Elvin, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. A horse safe for me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. So sorry. Natsuki? Hmm. The girl with the sad attitude. I'm eating tech tech right now, so let me give me a second. Whose name is apparently Natsuki is one I don't recognize. <coughs> Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sorry, says that quietly into my ear and turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yori, the smartest in the club. D -d Don't say things like that. Yori, who appears comparatively more mature to him, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Uh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you know you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Elvin. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. So, having her smile at me feels uh, so genuinely feels a little. You, you too, Monica. Come sit down, Elvin. We made room for you at the table, so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Now, then, how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sawyer man mentioned, it's been widened so that there is one more space. One space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk in over to the counter of the room, where Natsuki wrap, grabs a wrap tray and Yuri opens the closet. <laughs> I have a cold. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Oh, oh, whoa! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, and Monica, I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full, and has already managed to get icing on her face. My favorite girl is probably Monica. Even though I look like a psycho bitch. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? If I finally bite down, the icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Wh why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard of someone before? Made them for you or anything? Eh? I thought you technically did. Sayori so said, well, maybe. Not for you, you, you know, you dummy. All right, all right. That's good. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. Keep a whole tea set in this classroom? 
Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I guess. Eh. Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh, that's not that insulted. Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least, at least, at least enjoy. At least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faints, faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what you maybe? What made you consider the literature club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori re seems really happy here, so that's okay. Don't be embarrassed. Well, make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the literature club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of this debate club, debate club last year? Uh, uh, well, you know. To be honest, I can't st stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd rather, I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it, if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica is really a great leader. Yuri also not in agreement. And I'm surprised that there are more people in this club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it, put it that, that. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it also but it makes school events, like a festival, that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah, we'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though, I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Elvin, what kinds of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read of these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Matsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. I'm, uh, not doing well. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But, you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of ad Im imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Oh no. Uh, I've read a horror book once. I desperately grasped something I can relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you, as you I guess you could say that. But if, if a story makes me think, or it takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Just a real horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why it's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? Well, what? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind the last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Don't say that loud! You can give me that back. Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. Oh god, Sayori so sidles up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! Natsuki, you write your own poems? 
Well, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think it's impressive. Why don't you care to share them to mine? N no! That took you to eyes. You, you wouldn't like them. Ah, uh, not a very confident writer yet. I should save this just in case. Uh, I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing the level, that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerable and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Aw, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll, share, we'll all, sh all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um... Da -da -da. Yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us get all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Elvin? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with, with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. So I already made me convinced... Yeah, convinced me to stop by, but I never made my decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and um... I'll lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but... I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm... Elvin... You, you all... I'm defenseless against these three... these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. R right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy. So Yuri wraps my wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey, hey, you really scared for me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the literature club. Oh, uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that we can finally offic officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone, remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting, so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Hello, Elvin. I look forward to see how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Elvin. Since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, so Yuri and I never walk home together anymore because she has always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. So Yuri, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in the literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. All right, I'll just need to make my time. That I'll just make, need to make the most out of my circumstances, and I'll, I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member would like. Something good might happen with whoever you like. Oh, I like Monica. I guess out of these three, I think, I guess, sorry, really. Uh... Uh... Wonderful... Lipstick... Embrace... Um... Oh, they all have skirts. I'll, I'll just say skirt. Um... Loud. <laughs> She's out. Uncanny. Insight frightening bunny. Bunny. Poof. Excuse me. Heartbeat. Nibble. Valentine. Marshmallow. 
uh, on Massacre. Amazing Journey, Climax, Fireworks, Strawberry, Feather, Cage, Fish, Fish, Uh, let's see Derby. Peace. Love. Uh... Smile. That's a nightgown. Portrait. Determination. Silly. Alone. Fallible. Doki Doki. Mouse. Fear. Misery. Fireflies. Warm. Sharp. Suicide, really. Family. Say family. Holiday. This home wrath. Uh, happiness. Headphones. Women forgive. Bouncy time. For no dirty joy. Hi again, Elvin. Glad to see you didn't run away from us. On us. Ah. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I kept my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Elvin. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. Sayori told me you didn't even want to join in the clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga question in the club room. M -m Natsuki finds herself stuck to saying, between saying Monica and manga. Manga, literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops, plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Elvin always gives us his best, as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. By cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy and distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Elvin can be good friends, too. Uh, um... Sayori... Uh, hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know. Wait, wait, Sayori! Eh, uh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's, it's really nothing. What is it? N n never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Uh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. Um, it'll make you happy no matter what. I is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want me to want it to be. Oh, all right. Here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, but it, it, it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. That this is how it is this girl accidentally being so cute. She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you, I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically took the book. Take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging through around in the closet. Man, it looks like no one wants to be a bother today. I slumped down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs though. Hmm. Well, we can't get up, give up. The festival's our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of liter a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We can't. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't seem to solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we, did, if we can't come up with the most fun idea ever, 
nothing ever. Nobody will come in the first place if it's a liter literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get old get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do this thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayuri is talking, taking this really seriously. It's rare to see her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, you think Fu is the trick? W what kind? Uh, well, I guess we could. Cupcakes! Aha, good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested well, yeah. That wasn't why you suggested it, right? How can you speak to many my creative tummy? Tch. Cupcakes cakes it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayuri is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble with find finding my any motivation at all. Sayuri can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my place about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Ah! I open my eyes to find Sayuri's face filling my vision. I nearly fall in my chair. Eh, sorry. Wait, actually I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't a nappy club. Does our school have a nappy club? You're staying up late, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time with anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that out loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, so shut so, up. So, that's so you're right. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh. Not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... That's it's a secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori. It's written all over you. Eh? Sayori glances around at herself. How is this written all over me? You're clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around... Your hair is sticking out all around here. Ah, I run my fingerprints, fingerprints, fingertips down the side of Sayuri's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow is your straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right there. I try to wipe the stain with my finger, but but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's gonna tell you about it because you don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh, that's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank you think me later. I start to button her blazer from the front. Okay, this is just getting creepy. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Okay. <laughs> This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird to have... It is to have a friend who does these things. Eh? But don't say that. Don't make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh... I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to finally close the button. Your chip. Oh, God. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> It did when I bought it. So, if you ever button it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It <laughs> means my boob can figure it out. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so, uh, why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer or button up like that? But it's so stuffy. Uh, it's not worth it at all. Sayuri hastily buttons her blazer one more, once more. Phew, that's so much better. Sayuri puts her arm out and curls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't t even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would, anyway. So that's why I'm keeping this it unbuttoned. What the heck? Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? 
I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on getting to bed earlier. Fine, fine, it's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so. Huh. So maybe you should come away wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, so you're already... Aw, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell you with some tell with you sometimes. Sadie. <sighs> okay, everyone. Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. I think there's 20 and and <laughs> in this in this, in this escape. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Elvin, I can't wait to read your read yours. Yeah, same. I felt it sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to receive retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration, since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pulled out their poems. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine, pristine writing from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same as well. Ah, I'm definitely most comfortable sharing with Sayori first. She's my good friend after all. Da -da -da. Oh my goodness. This is so good, Elvin. Eh? I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. Honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. Aha! I don't know. Uh, geez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of people, you know? So, when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's an elven poem. And that makes it feel extra special. Special. Like, I can feel your feelings in it. Sayuri hugs a sheet against her chest. Oh, no. You're so weird, Sayuri. <laughs> I'm just really happy that you wore World 1. It just reminds me of how you're re really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in the club room. Er, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, because, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? That's- it's like I said before, Elvin. Deep down in them, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people, that's something that only r really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori really sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined, knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah, and I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Now you read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you miss me. Kissing my forehead to help, help me out of bed, making me rub the sleeping from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish you a rainy day? Um, are you trusting that? I look above, the sky is blue, it's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> Sayuri, this is just a guess, but did you wait until morning to write this? No, it's just, just a little bit. Can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I just go try my best. Uh, yeah. I don't didn't mean to say that it was a good bad poem. It it came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school, it's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> that was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. 
excuse me. Well, I guess I could look fo forward to it. I'll ignore it though. Hi, Alvin. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring it up, things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ah ha 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 ha. Don't worry, Elvin. We're all a little embarrassed today, don't you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something you Sayuri would like. Is that so? You and Sayuri are really good friends, right? It w I wouldn't be surprised if you had so those sort of things in common. You're a psycho bitch. Ah, well. We may be good friends, but Sayuri and I are actually really different. Hmm. Oh. Well, that may be the case. You press the scroll button. This. But maybe there are also some similarity that you wouldn't expect. Oh. The way she talks about you. It seems like the two of you really care about each other's well-being, even if you think show it in different ways. Oh, oh sorry, I skipped that. So I think it's the kind of vibe I get when you're reading your poem. Hmm, you sure you're not reading into it too much? Ha 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 ha, I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Yuri's writing has kind of a gentle feeling to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each other and their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased toward their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write a way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Aha. Ahahaha. <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always find them that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole and wall. It couldn't have been me. <clears throat> See the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film let out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas. What the heck? Already scorched with the permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It's too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realized now that I wasn't looking in, I was looking out, and he, on the other side, was looking in. What the heck? So what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform, is that, that what you call it? Sorry, I'm not really the kind of right person to ask for feedback. <clears throat> ha 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 ha, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. This, this, that is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can really be powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of e e epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming out strongly. Maybe after everyone is better being friends with each other. Better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any product, pro progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big, dark puddle ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Yuri. Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes more than enough for her, more enough time for her to finish reading. Um, oh, so sorry. 
I forgot to start speaking. <clears throat> um, that's fine. Don't force yourself. I I'm not. I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, is it? Err, uh, yeah. Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess that it might be after reading through it. Uh, so it's that bad. No. Hold on, let me go check my settings. Good. Did I just raise my voice? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You already brought your privacy in your hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. I'm, it might take a, Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I don't- I didn't really know this. What were you saying? Right, um... It says that there's specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. They're deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form and fit the two together. And the end result is that both the style and the expression, the expressiveness, are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's, it's, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. <clears throat> of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing, even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it comes with practice and learning by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. <clears throat> Masuki can be a bit biased though. Biased? How? Hmm, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Tsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my po thoughts process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if it's a rare po opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light, the tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. Oh, oh. it must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, bathing, breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. That's pretty good. I'm I'm so sorry. I have a ter such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking of that at all. But it took you a long time to read it. Uh. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh, that's a relief. I also like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really de descriptive. I said desperate. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Hoo <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, you elven. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose it did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than to tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in our last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. And soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more than solemn, putting it that way. I haven't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Okay, and that's Suki. Dot, dot, dot. Eh? Well, it's about what I expect from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically, it's not cute enough for you to, for your tastes. You want me to get smacked? Or you want me to get smacked? I'll pass. Sigh. <laughs> well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. 
Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Yeah? I told you you're not gonna like it. I like it. What? Let's be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be sophist all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, every seeing everything around you to, 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 to great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But other than the nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more right on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So yeah, so you did. I guess no more went into the to it than I realized. That's what it may, means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then it won't take that away from her. Phew. I guess it's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. <coughs> this is a literature club, after all. I, I sigh. <laughs> I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Asuki. They generally exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, so, uh, Yuri smiles sadly. What's wrong with this language? Eh? Um, did you see something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clear about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. It just meant the language, I guess. I was just trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you, mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but I really didn't come up nice at all. Um, well, I don't. I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Elvin did too. So based on that, I gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciated the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly un inspiring, which I haven't yet. No, and Elvin Elvin liked the poem too, so you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh. I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? eh? That's not what I, I... Uh... You... You're, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Elvin appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh. And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? Ooh, two girls fighting over me. I... No. That was full of myself. I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, uh... Um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I'm just gonna say it. I wasn't the one whose boobs naturally grew a size bigger as soon as Elvin started showing up. Nice. But Natsuki... Oh, my fell. Um, Natsuki, that's a little... Doesn't evolve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turn towards me as if they just noticed how I was standing there. Elvin! She's... she's trying to make me look bad. That's... not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective. Then this wouldn't have for happened in the first place. What's the point in making your poems all convoluted for no reason? 
meaning should jump out at the reader. I'll force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Elvin. W wait there's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Elder? Um, well, uh, how did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. What? Excuse me. But whomever, whomever I agree with, you're probably thinking more highly of me. Uh, Hatsuki. Hatsuki glares at me, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead, I turn to Yuri. Yuri. Uh, but Yuri's expression is so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Uh, so Yuri. <laughs> eh. Yeah. Everyone's fighting is making. Everyone's fighting is making so Yuri uncomfortable. How can you two keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this, Elvin? Well. That's her problem. This isn't about her. I, I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless Yuri wants to tell Yuri about what a stuck-up jerk she's being. She would never. <coughs> it's your immaturity that's making her upset in the first place. Excuse me? Are you listening to yourself? It's exactly why... why exactly why nobody likes... Stop! Asuki, Yuri, the guys are my friends. I, I just want everyone to get along to be happy. My friends are wonderful people, and I love them because of their differences. Masui's poems, they're amazing because they give you so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint beautiful pictures in your head. Everyone's so talented, so why are we fighting? But b because, well, also, Masuki's cute and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. They get beautiful. Sayori, Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make something. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So this is why your Sayori is the vice president, I whispered to Monica. She's not in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader, but I can organize things. And I can organize things. But I'm not very good with people. I can't even bring myself to interject. As president's president, that's kind of embarrassing to me. Ah ha ha. Nah. It's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that means Sayori is amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but sometimes it's weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. I take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself hurt. I'm just gonna end this video because I've been recording for like an hour already, so bye.